Let me say that again because I forgot to turn on the recording device. There we go. Walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, for the days are evil. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat> Redeem the time, for the days are evil. Redeem the time is a refrain in the poetry of the great T.S. Eliot, that great Anglo-Catholic and writer, uh, once he was converted of so many extraordinary poems, uh, including Ash Wednesday, his poem of conversion, uh, and of course the wasteland which he wrote before his conversion uh, is a wonderful looking at that process and at what life is like without Christ to gather in everything, to make sense of everything. Bishop Morse, who was fond of quoting T.S. Eliot, always told us uh, that man is irredeemably religious because of his mortality. And every century or so, someone comes along who is capable of articulating that, uh, and he believed that Eliot was certainly one of those persons. Uh, when my brother died, he suggested that I read, and this seemed very strange to me at the time, uh, The Four Quartets by Eliot. Uh, and he told me to pay attention particularly to, I believe it was the third of them, The Dry Salvages, which the poet instructs his readers to pronounce as The Dry Salvages, which is very strange. But eventually I got it. Eventually I understood it. And it meant what Bishop Morse told me otherwise, that now that you have lost a loved one, you know that you must love while there is yet time. Too often in our lives... We see the world as a drama in which we are the chief star. We see the world as our own story and our lives revolving around ourselves. And one of the things that Christ in our lives enables us to break the habit of is exactly that. We begin to recede in our own minds from our own story's center. <clears throat> if we put Jesus Christ at the center of our lives, we will put him at the center of our story. <clears throat> and one of the things that Christ is doing for us and for the world is redeeming the time. Because the days are evil, why are the days evil? The days are evil because sin is in the world, and because sin is in the world, there is death, and because there is death, there is a tendency in ourselves to put mourning ahead of feasting, to put sadness ahead of joy. The days are evil now because of the fall of humankind, because sin is in the world and he who is the prince of sin rules it. And in ruling the world, he rules something also that we don't think about. He rules time, or at least the human perception of time. Our human perception of time is governed shaped by our mortality. And because of that shaping, we often don't see God working in the world, working in our lives. We miss so many of these small daily miracles that he is making and doing all around us. And one of the features of letting go and letting God is to start seeing those things 
We, as it was said when I was growing up, we stop and smell the roses. You begin to notice things when you are focused on the right things. Being focused on Christ is to be focused on love in our lives, in what comes after the forgiveness of sins. We must repent of all the evil in our lives, but once we have repented, we must learn to move on to joy because God has given us the redemption the redemption of our lives from sin and death and the redemption of every moment of time, each second, each hour, each day, each minute belongs to God. In sin and the fall and the kingdom of death, Satan has robbed us of all of that Christ not only gives it back to us, he gives it back to us redeemed by his own precious death and passion. One of the functions of what we are here today to do, the celebration of the Blessed Eucharistic Sacrament, one of its functions is to redeem the moment for us. We come forward at this low mass, we come forward in sacred silence to a moment of encounter with God in Christ in the simplest format. Format's not a great word, but in the simplest thing, the simplest creature, bread and wine. And we get a moment of supreme focus in time, where time slows down and the power of God in Christ is literally on our tongues. His body, his blood, transfigured as he is, transfiguring time itself and therefore transfiguring our very lives. Treasure that moment. Cherish the focus of it. Feel the gift of God's body and blood and feel the time slowing down. Life getting bigger, getting grander. He is redeeming the time for us and turning our lives into greater poetry than any human poet could possibly write, with the end result, as St. Paul says elsewhere, that we may rejoice. And then again I say, the saint writes, rejoice. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.